Good evening. We are grateful to have you with us on this, the last night of the year. We welcome you to our New Year's Eve experience virtually. I am Richard Allen Washington, and I am grateful that you have chosen on this night to fellowship with me in the sanctuary of St. John in Columbus, Georgia, to hear what God might say to you about the, the year you've experienced and preparation for the year that's on the way. I want to be perfectly clear with you. God is good. And this year, I pray that you've experienced the love of God in a fresh way. I don't want to hold you up. I just want to invite you to join us in the next few moments to go through what God has shared with me is essential to you moving into the new year. I am so grateful and I'm so excited. And it is my prayer family that you are blessed. I do want to say thank you for celebrating and supporting this ministry, for tuning in for 52 weeks, including this going into the 53rd or the, the first week of the new year. I want to thank you for your participation. I want to thank you for your willingness to worship in spite of what happens in the world. And finally, I want to encourage you tonight to offer a sacrificial gift of love. I know it's the end of the year. I know you've had Christmas and I know you are pinching pennies. But I want to stand tonight and tell you that God has met every need you've had this year, that each of you, including myself, have always had a roof over your head. You've been able to touch the heat or the air, depending on how you felt. You've been able to open your refrigerator and have food galore. You've been able to put on a different outfit of every day and by choice, not wear the same shoes. I want you to know that a God who will make sure that you have that taken care of is a God that you can trust with your resources. So tonight, I'm asking that you seed into this virtual ministry. I'm asking that you would seed into our ministry at St. John tonight. Make a sacrificial gift of love to St. John so that we can do more in the kingdom in the coming weeks. I need your support and I pray that you would do that when the offering is coming. So please give and it will be given back to you. Let's go to God in prayer on this year. Thank you, God, as the year comes to a conclusion on this New Year's Eve, the eve of new possibilities and the eve of the out with the old and in with the new. Now speak to us in a special way that we might be able to discern the way that you would have us to go while reflecting on the lessons that you have tried to teach us this year. We love you and we are grateful for your love and your faithfulness to us. Now speak and we will be listening. As a matter of fact, God, use this your servant for your glory and we will say amen in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so very much. Now let's go to our God's word for this, the final message of 2022. Tonight, God calls our attention to the Old Testament, to the 28th division of Psalms. Psalm 28, and I want you to turn with me to Psalm 28 and let's listen and receive the message from the Lord on this, the last night of the year. Psalm 28, starting at verse one. Let's hear a Psalm of David. To thee, O Lord, I call. My rock, be not deaf to me, lest if thou shalt be silent to me, I become like those going down in the pit. Hear the voice of my supplication as I cry to thee for help. As I lift my hands toward the most holy sanctuary, take me not off with the wicked, with those who are workers of evil, who speak peace with their neighbors while mischief in their heart. Give them according to their work and according to the evil of their deeds. For them, give to them according to the work of their hands. Render them due their reward, because they do not regard the work of the Lord or the work of God's hands. God will break them down and build them up no more. Blessed be the Lord, 
for he has heard the voice of my supplication. The Lord is my strength and my shield, and in him my heart trust. I am helped, and my heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to God. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. O oh, save your people and bless your heritage. Be thy shepherd and carry them forever. Amen. I invite your attention again to the subject which God has called us to while we wait. While we wait. Beloved, on this, the final night of a I want you to think about something as I have thought about it. After much reflection, I have considered the greatest lesson that God has attempted to teach each and every one of us this year. A lesson that we have, quite frankly, not all gotten according to God's plan. Do you recognize that right now there is one lesson that God has attempted to teach each and every one of us, that each of us have in some ways not captured completely? As a pastor, I want to be honest with the members and the family of St. John. I want to be honest with the virtual family who listens to us and is spiritually connected to us by the watch care experience. I want to be honest with you. There is a lesson that God has intentionally been trying to teach each of us the entire year. And we have all failed to recognize it and we have not gotten everything that we should from this lesson. There is one lesson that God has been instructing and attempting to give to each and every one of us. And I'm here tonight to help you understand the power of this lesson for this year. Do you recognize that every year God attempts to show us his love? The fact that God's love is unconditional and it's an unconditional presence that always finds its way to us. And it's waiting for us to find our way to it. That's God. God is love. And we know that God loves us because of the activity and the behavior that God has exhibited in this year. That's a lesson. We understand that God is joy. And you know that I am so excited about what joy is. Joy is what? A resistance to despair and all of its forces and friends. We know that God in the midst of everything that's happened this year, God has tried to teach us how to have joy in the midst of a powerful and painful year. But beloved, the one lesson that I know God has tried to give each of us, me included, that I have often missed the mark completely at gathering is not love. I know God loves me and I know I have a responsibility to honor God and to love you as I love myself. And I know that God has given me the power of joy that no matter what I have been through and what has come my way this year, I am certain that I've had the joy of the Lord, which is to resist the despair of the world, to resist the depression that the world throws at me. I am certain that love and joy are amazing. I'm even certain, family, that faith and the development of my faith has been a lesson that God has attempted to share with me this year. And I'm certain that each and every one of you who are partnered with me in living for Jesus Christ understand that faith is the foundation of the things we hope for. It is the evidence slash rebuke slash correction slash like this. I like this. The reproof of what we cannot see. Faith has told us that every lie that has been issued against us is not true. Faith has said that what the doctors have originally declared would be your end was just the beginning of God's way for you. Faith has declared that you would overcome the issues in your life this year. And look at us now. We are loved by God through all things. We have the joy of the Lord in spite of the challenges we have faced. And beloved, guess what? We have faith the size of the mustard seed. And we have in so many ways told so many things this year move out of my way. And the mountain of trouble and anxiety has had to dissipate. We've lived that. But there is one lesson that God has instructed me to bring into our forefront on tonight. And with these last few hours, we have an uh, opportunity, family, to embrace them. What is the lesson? It's simple. 
waiting. My brothers and sisters, the lesson of waiting is one that we have not mastered. It is one that members of St. John Church have shown their weakness, have shown that they are still in need of a bit of growing up in it. It's an issue. It's a, it's a lesson that God has tried to experience or show through experiences with each and every one of us. You don't have to be a member. You can virtually be connected to us. And you have got to understand the power of the lesson God is attempting to teach in our waiting. God wants us to learn how to wait. And if I may be prophetic, I know this in 2023, the Lord willing that we see it come in. Waiting will be one of the spiritual tools that God knows that we will need before we need anything else. You got to learn, my brother. You got to accept my sister how to wait on God. This year, God has attempted to teach us and to reveal to us the lesson of waiting and how essential the lesson of waiting is in our spiritual journey called life. How have you done with waiting this year? How have you endured waiting? How have you been able to overcome waiting? How have you grown in the activity of waiting this year? How has the spiritual discipline of waiting affected your life? I'm glad that we are not alone. For the writer of this 28th Psalm, David to be specific, understands the struggle, the strain, and the lessons that he also had to learn about the season and the spiritual tool of waiting. David wrote the 28th Psalm while he waited on God. And tonight, I know that for any other reason in this world, God has attuned our attention to the spiritual lesson of waiting for 2022, preparing us for 2023. While we wait, David wrote while he waited on God. And now we listen to this word from God while we wait. God illustrated one day, said you cannot live beyond where your faith is. You cannot live beyond where your faith is. Wherever your faith level is, you will rise no higher than that. Now, brother and sister, where is your faith as we close this year? What level is your faith at? How low has your faith been this year? And I can promise you what has not happened is not tied to whether you have the ability to do. It has to do with whether you've got the faith to handle it. And that's a word for me. The opportunities that God is forcing the Christian church and the believers of God through Christ Jesus to deal with have nothing to do with abilities. It has to do with the level of faith we have. The message of waiting, family, and waiting in faith is what God calls us to right now. While we wait, David, how did you handle having to wait on God throughout your life? How did you handle in this 28th Psalm having to wait? I'm so grateful that God directed us here that we can learn this final lesson while we wait. The one thing David says in the ver first two verses, he says to God, I call out to you, my rock. In essence, David is illustrating something for us that one of the first things we need to understand while we wait is that we have to constantly make an appeal to our God. I want you to know that some of us living for Christ, looking at God and attempting to wait, are struggling with the realities that we still have to make more than one appeal to God. Oh, we say that people are not mind readers, but certainly God is. But do you recognize right now that even after you ask for what you need in prayer, do you recognize that you still have to continually make appeals to our God? David says to my rock, I call out to you. It's illustrating that there has been some time frames between David's writing and God's answering. From verses 1 to verses 8 or 9, there is a whole lot that takes place. Likewise, in our lives from January of 2022 to December of 2022, there have been a lot of things that have taken place. But one thing that we need to understand while we are waiting on God, we have to recognize that we have to make appeals to God. 
David makes an appeal to God. And in that appeal, he calls on God to answer him. He appeals for God, his rock, to see about him. Beloved, the lesson that I need you to appreciate is that when you are waiting on God, while you are waiting, you must constantly make an appeal to God. This year should have told you that. This year should have illustrated that while you are praying in January and March showed up, you still needed to make the appeal to God. You still needed to call on the name of the Lord. David says, Lord, I need you. In essence, he pulls out an old school song. I need you to survive. David says to the Lord, I need you. And I need you to hear me. And David makes an appeal. What takes place in the appeal of David? It's the same thing that takes place in the appeal of you and me. David's appeal is for God to hear him. Our appeal is for God to hear us. And watch this. In the midst of waiting, while we wait, we will suffer some things. Beloved, this year should have taught us that. That while we were waiting on God to answer the prayer request and the needs that we have, that we suffer through some things. But can I be honest? In the midst of our suffering this year, have you not overcome it? David suggests that he needs God to come quick and in a hurry. But David does understand that while he is waiting on God, he will endure some things. I've come to tell you this year. We've all had to endure some things. While God is working some things in our lives out, we will suffer some things. I've never known God to answer prayers without the person who's been requesting the assistance and the power of God to come to avoid suffering. All of us have to suffer. All of us have to go through some things. All of us have to experience that God is coming and while we are waiting, we shall suffer. Beloved, that's what this year should have taught you. That suffering is not for only the non-believer, but suffering is also for the believer. And some suffering the believer experiences, family, the non-believer will never know. Why does God choose for you as a believer to suffer? Why did God allow you to go through what you've gone through this year? I can tell you the truth that God trusted each of us with a season of suffering while we were waiting. I don't know about you, but I learned more in the moments of suffering about my relationship with God and about what God has empowered me to deal with and about how strong God could be in my life. I learned it only while I suffered. Come here, I'm trying to show you, St. John, that there are some things that only you will learn in your suffering, in your pain, and in your discomforts of the life that you've been dealing with this year. Some diagnosis, some confrontation, some ups, some downs that only you can discover about what you and God can get you through is in the midst of that suffering. Can I pause and just ask this question? How much have you suffered this year? I asked you, how much have you suffered? And I wanted you to know that in making your appeal to God as David has, and he asked him not to be deaf to him, I need you to understand that your appeal unto God requires that you suffer. David is suffering. Why? This was written at a period of time when David was being chased by adversarial forces. It seemed like the enemies were closing in to the point that they were going to crush him, and he's waiting on God while we wait. On God, our enemies will not stop. I need to share that with you. The wisdom of this year should let you know that while you wait on God, the world will not stop pushing. The world will not stop requesting. The world will not stop working to break your neck. The world will not stop being what the word says to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But while we wait, continue to make the appeal to your God. Knock on the door every day. Knock on it more often if you need to. Beloved, he says, while I'm waiting, I will appeal to our God. We need to appeal. The lesson for waiting requires that we're willing to appeal to God more than once. I don't know why you think that you only need to ask God for something one time. 
A relationship with God requires that we constantly are seeking God's deliverance and God's dedication and God's spirit in our circumstance. David says, I need you not to be silent. Why? Here is the petition. Well, here is more of the appeal first. The appeal is for God to speak. And the reason why David says, I need you to talk to me is this, so that I won't become like others who will go down in the pit because you're not talking. The reason that you must continue to reach out to God and how these 12 months have taught you to continue while you're waiting to reach out to our God. That's the lesson. Reach out to God while you wait. Continually appeal to God. Why? Because not hearing from God is like being dead. I don't know about you, but I need God to talk to me. I need to be in constant communication with God because when God and I are vibing, when we're rolling, when we're chatting, when I'm seeking, when I'm hoping, the security that I need is in that. It's not just in God answering, it's in God walking with me and talking with me and strengthening me as the weaknesses of the world have almost broken me. Kim, it's God. Prue, it's God. Me, it's God. It's God continually walking with you as you are trying to figure it out. David says, Lord, don't do me in silence. What you're doing to so many others, in silence, I'm going down. But I want to be clear. He says also the appeal is necessary in order to wait. But I want to be clear. He says, hear my supplication, my cry for help. I lift up my hands toward the holy sanctuary. God in waiting wants us to turn wherever we are into a sanctuary. This, you know, the greatest lesson I hope St. John and others learn is that God's sanctuary is not limited to what you see right now. The lesson in waiting reveals that God is trying to show you what's in your heart. Are you conditional in your worship? Do you have to be in a sanctuary? Do you have to have the ability to come and sit where you feel most comfortable? Or can you worship and praise God and not be in the place that feels the most comfortable? That's a lesson that you learn in waiting. You learn what you can access and what you cannot. God is teaching patience, but more than that, while waiting, God is showing you that you turn wherever you are gathered into a sanctuary. Some people can't handle it. They need to grow. Some people have to have everything according to their way before they can function. I've come to tell you that's an immature saint. When everything has to be a certain way in your life, like you desire, you are immature. You are a spoiled brat and you need to grow up. Preach pastor. David says, don't, don't be silent. Please don't. I'll be going down and be dead. Whenever God ain't talking to you, it's like being dead. And then he says, while I'm waiting, I'm going to turn wherever I am into a sanctuary. This is all in his appeal. He's still appealing. Let me cut across the field and shut it down. He says, Lord, he makes a petition. Don't Take me away like the wicked and the evil workers. He says, don't take me away like them. And he says to us, what I like is, let me tell you what evildoers and the wicked really are. Are they people who disobey God? They get off your high horse because everybody that doesn't do everything they should do doesn't mean they're wicked and they're evil. Lesson. While you wait, you will discover what real wickedness and what real evil is. David says that the people who are wicked and evil are not always those who are perfect in their behavior. But what David illustrates, family, is that the wicked and the evil, get this, are people who speak with a smile on their face while they plan evil and low down treacherous ways of backstabbing people in their heart. In essence, he's saying that the hypocrites, the two-faced people are evil and wicked. I don't know about you, but I have discovered this year that there's some two-faced people. There's some wicked and evil people who have been coming toward us this year. They smiled in your face, 
but they've tried to stab you in your back. They've talked about you behind your back, evil and wicked. And David says, I don't want to be like them because they're going to get what they deserve. I want you to know, lesson while you wait, that even in the midst of waiting and making an appeal, make a petition to God. That God not handle you like he handles the wicked and evil. You know why David mentions this? And I got to get out of here. But he mentions this because in waiting, sometimes we believe that we ought to take things into our own hands. We do. Let me handle it. Let me take care of it. God, you ain't move fast enough. And the moment we do, we look out for ourselves in a way that wicked and evil people do. We make everything about us. We plan for us, we act on our behalf, and we protect us. All at the same time asking God to enlarge our territory. Why? Because it's all about you. Sometimes you need to make a petition to God to say, Lord, don't treat me like the wicked and evil people who smile in everybody's face while they're looking for ways to put themselves first. This year, while you waited, should have taught you that, that I don't need the backstab, that I don't need to put myself before somebody else, that I don't need to mishandle people and their opportunity just to make myself feel richer and secure. Make the petition to God right now that you don't get handled like that because they are gonna get what they deserve. I wanna pause. I know I'm going a little lengthy tonight, but I want to pause and say to you, the moment you can put other people first, the moment you can put the plans of God before yourself, the moment you can tithe when you don't know what you want to give, the moment you can trust God's way and not your own, the moment you can say, not my will, but your will, the moment you can put God first is the moment you move from being considered a lowdown and treacherous. And watch this, the word of God says, when you can do that, you can cast bread on the water and it'll come back to you when you need it and how you need it and you don't even know that you need it. That's how God works. That's why you can't beat God's giving. This year, have you been able to sing? The more he gives, the more he gives, the more you give and the more he'll give to you. Keep on giving because you just can't beat God at what God started the giving ministry. And that's why I get excited because God will never be indebted to us. I'm encouraging you tonight. Make a decision that I'm going to trust God with everything, including my heart. David says, don't, don't, don't run me off with them. He makes a petition that God not treat him the same way. I got to go. Then he says, beloved, around verse six through nine, David does something extraordinary. He moves from anxiety in verses one through verses four. He moves. He was anxious, crying out, appealing to God consistently. He is making a petition to God saying, don't do me like you do others who are evil and wicked. But in verse number six, David says something so rich that it has to be our testimony as we close this year. He says, blessed be the Lord who heard my voice and my supplications. Do you realize that God has heard you? Do you realize, watch this, that you can trust your prayers? I'm out, but make the appeal this year, while you wait, continue to appeal. While you are waiting, continue to petition God not to treat you like evil and wicked people who will get their own. You make a decision. I make a decision to give and to trust God with what we have. Therefore, God will bring it back to us when we need it most. And finally, bless God, which means David has discovered that God is trustworthy. This year, while you wait, have you discovered that you can trust God? Have you discovered that while you're waiting, you need to trust God? I'm out. David says that I am able to trust the Lord. I've discovered this year in 2022, between January and December, I have found I can trust the Lord. Have you? Have you discovered that you can trust him when you're right? 
When you've done every righteous thing you know to do and it has not worked in your behalf, can you trust him? Have you discovered that you can trust him? I have, even when you mess up. When you fail at what you should have done, when you fail at what you ought be, when you fail at being the best of who you are, have you discovered that you, my brother, you, my sister, can trust God? This year should have been a year where you discovered that I can trust him. I can trust the Lord. And as we go into the new year, there's one song we need to sing. It's not they that wait on the Lord. It's not amazing grace. It's not one of the songs that uplift and, and testify of his goodness. But we ought to be able to sing that I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until my change comes. I am going to trust him. And watch this. The old saints, got so, it got so good to them that they said, not only will I trust in the Lord, but I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right until I die. I want you to know that while you wait, trust. While you wait, treat everybody. And while you wait, trust in the promise of our God. Have a great year. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. But it starts with the lesson that God has tried to teach each of us this year. That's how to wait. How do we wait, Pastor? We wait by making appeals, constantly seeking God every day. How do we wait? By making a petition that God not treat us like the wicked and the evildoers. And we wait by trusting in the promises. If you have done that, if you haven't learned that this year, you have to repeat some of the lessons again. But if you're willing to move forward, you will need this waiting in 2023. Because the best of God's promises for you haven't come this year. They're on the way. Again, I invite you to make the sacrificial gift of love. I'm doing it. Make that gift. Do that now. Do that right now. Do that right now. It'll be on your screen. Make your contribution right now. Beloved, God will bless you. Secondly, I want you to know that you and I are headed for greatness in 2023. Guess what? I look to see you tomorrow. We're in person tomorrow. Won't you come on out? We shall celebrate the Lord's Supper together, and we're looking to have you join us. I hope that you have a great, safe, and powerful night. God loves you, I love you, and I'll see you on tomorrow.